I really need to let this out. I can't bear to live with what happened that night anymore. Every time I close my eyes, I can see the death in her eyes and the malice in his. I had just recently moved out to Scotland with my fiancé. We had moved to a beautiful town in the north called Elgin. We were two weeks in, and everything was going well. We had settled in just fine. We thought we were going to live a long and happy life there. Oh, how wrong we were. On the third week, strange things started happening to us one night that would change our lives. My fiancé received a phone call at four in the morning. A strange time for anyone to receive a phone call. She looked up, blinded by the light on her mobile, and answered with a tired, Hello? This was followed by more hellos, and then she hung up. She said that she could only hear a very faint screaming noise in the background of the phone. Unsettled, she turned her phone off so that she wouldn't receive any more phone calls. Five minutes later, I receive a phone call. This time, it was just pure static we could hear, with laughing in the background. I immediately got very angry at this disturbing little game someone was playing with us. I cursed and told them to stop phoning. After that, the static stopped. And all that was heard was a huge bang on the front door. We both jumped. She clutched onto me, crying, terrified. I told her everything was going to be alright. I got up and told her to stay there. I put on my dressing gown and grabbed a bat, and I walked towards the front door. I pulled the curtain covering the window on the door to find a message. The message read, You shouldn't have left her alone. As soon as I finished reading it, I heard a scream coming from upstairs. I immediately ran upstairs to find myself frozen at the entrance of our bedroom. There my wife was standing, blood dripping from her neck, looking right into my eyes, sobbing for me to help. And there was that thing behind her. That fucking thing that ruined my fucking life. It was a tall, completely naked creature, humanoid in shape. It was completely bald and had very skinny limbs. So skinny that you could almost see its bones. Its face was the most horrendous thing I had ever seen in my life. It had a huge smile on its face, stretching right across, and had completely bloodshot eyes, one significantly smaller than the other. I had never felt this feeling before. I couldn't do anything. I was literally frozen. I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even say how sorry I was. All I could do was cry. This creature slowly crept towards me, with my fiancé in his clutches. His face came right down to my height, and he looked right into my eyes. At this point, he started to scream. However, all that came out of his mouth was static. I was terrified. He ran back very quickly to the window and jumped out with her. As soon as he left the building, I fell to the ground. I jumped up to look outside to see if I could see her with it, but they were nowhere to be seen. Two days later, I was a wreck. I hadn't slept. I had just been researching to see if anyone knew what this was. If anyone had ever related to me. I had filed a missing persons report at the local police station, who were extensively investigating the disappearance. Nobody had ever heard of the thing that I had seen. A month had gone by. Nothing had happened. I hadn't been working. I had barely slept. I could barely live anymore. I took a razor blade to my wrists. As the blood seethed from my wound, it felt like all the pain of the past events was now flowing away. 
I looked up from the bathroom sink to the mirror. And there he was. Smiling just like before. Blood dripped from his eyes as he held my fiance's head up, severed from the body. Again, he screamed static and I fell to the floor. I felt my body growing weak as my wrist bled. I was terrified to look at the mirror, but I felt I had to. As I slowly rose from the ground, my reflection matched his. I was looking right into his eyes, where my eyes should have been, where my body should have been. I slowly raised my hand, and in the reflection, I was holding her head. As I looked to my right hand, there it was. I was holding my wife's head. I screamed and dropped it, but my screams were static. As the blood began running thick and black, I knew I was coming close to the end. I felt my body going cold. Surely, I couldn't have killed my fiancé. Surely not. I fell asleep. I woke up in a hospital bed, confused, wrist bandaged. As I awoke, two policemen walked into the room and told me they had some questions for me. They told me her head was found in my house, and that I wasn't going to be going anywhere for a while. They told me to rest and that they would come back later. As they walked out of the room, one of them turned around and said, Oh, one last thing. His mouth then opened incredibly wide, and the only sound that filled the room was pure static. <laughs>